high resolution audio. Uh, you know, what what is it? What should it be? And what does it often turn out to be? Well, I could nitpick here because what yeah. you just said is what is high resolution audio? <clears throat> and I actually learned something from the last time we spoke back in New York in June at the CE Week events mm -hmm. during a, uh, a presentation that Mark Feiner from the Digital Entertainment Group put on where he rolled out a new logo for the music content that we want in higher or high res. So there's now a music logo and a an audio logo for high res. So when you oh, ask I the think, question, I think we have a picture of those as well. You do. Uh, the, um, the the two labels or the two logos. The we two should logos. be able to see those. And so that's kind of that's kind of weird that there are two different logos. What the heck does that mean? Well, that's why I posed the question that I did here that you that you put up on the graphic I created is. I don't think you could find a handshake full of people that would know what the difference is between these. And I, in fact, didn't know until I investigated and actually got in touch with the Japan Audio Society some months ago. Because Sony originally, some years ago, and I would guess it's probably three or four years ago, came up with the logo that's on the screen on the left-hand side, as I say, the gold and brown high-res audio logo. And they mm -hmm. established a, a set of requirements. It didn't say hardware or software on the the PowerPoint slide that was forwarded from the group that I belong to. It simply said these are the requirements in order to gain, uh, you know, license privilege of, of this logo, for this logo. And it includes 40 kilohertz. Uh, uh, basically, it comes down to 96K, 24 bits between the source, the microphone, and the delivery. And I, I stood up and cheered. I said, finally, somebody is adhering to, to specifications that make some sense, that actually elevates our listening and recording experience. And just for, those who, just, for, just for those who might not understand those terms, let's make sure they, everybody does. Uh, 96 kilohertz is the sampling rate, the, the rate at which the digital audio is being created, which is quite a bit faster than what it is for CDs, what we're most familiar with. 24 bits is the bit depth of, of each of those samples, which is uh, greater than the 16 bits that are used for CDs, which basically results in greater dynamic range and wider frequency response. Yeah. Uh, uh, not frequency response, lower noise floor on the on the bits. Well, the bits, and, yeah. And, and then the sample rate, of course, gives you wider frequency response, but also gives you gentler right. filters. And, and that's helpful for those hardware guys out there who are trying to get rid of the the uh, uh, aliasing and, and over uh, overloads, the foldovers that happen when you have frequencies yep. beyond the Nyquist frequency. Okay, so good. Just wanted to make sure we were, had that out of the way. Those are very good specs at 96 so I, you know, I start looking around. I write in my blog post every once in a while. Like, okay, we've got this great specification. Let's let's universalize it. Let's make everybody adhere to this. Because a year previous to that, with the uh, same organizations, the NARIS folks and CEA and, and labels, as well as the DG, DEG, came out with a spec on what high resolution audio was. High resolution audio, not high resolution music. They got confused themselves because it applies only to hardware. Because their definition had said, you know, anything better than CD quality and, and even CDs into a higher bit bucket or analog tapes from the first part of the 19th, 20th century, rather, would qualify. So, you know, it's not clarifying anything. It makes it worse. The, the logo from Sony was then given to the JAS. The JAS then came to the CEA and said, would you like to use this? Make it available to your manufacturers here in the United States. And so we just talk, discussed that, and I thought it was a great idea. And then I finally got in touch with the JAS myself, and I said, so what's the deal here? He said, well, it's only for hardware. It only applies for the DACs, the headphones, the speakers, the receivers. Any component that runs a signal in from the beginning and out to the end has to be, you know, 40 kilohertz capable and 24 bits, but it doesn't apply to software. In spite of the fact that as you look around on certain sites, uh, GoBuzz in France started using the high resolution audio logo for the content. So we started getting contradictions and, and confusion again. I kind of pointed that out. I think it kind of nipped at the heels a little bit that they weren't consistent. And the content people, the people reselling you standard res audio in high res bit buckets and charging you a lot of extra money decided we should probably carve out our own thing because we're never going to meet the high res audio logo. We'll come up with our own logo and our own set of standards, which are in fact lower, much lower than the hardware people. So here you think you've got this great piece of hardware or headphone speakers that'll deliver all these wonderful new frequencies and dynamic range, when in fact the music doesn't even keep up with half of that. And, and that, and we're now talking about the high res music logo. The high res music logo says 
that we're, we have content that needs to meet and have its own logo because we can't meet the JAS specs. Let's create our own logo with lower specs. Those specs are generally now accepted to be 48K, 24 bits. Anything at that res or higher would qualify as high res music. But here's the problem, and it's one that you and I have chatted about before, and it has to do with the provenance of the file, which is why the, the definition as it was presented by the CEA press release in June of 2014, I believe, um, came with a set of master quality or, or source indicators. Where's the sound coming from that ultimately shows up in a 4824 or 9624-bit PCM bit bucket? Well, one of those could be uh, analog. So any analog recording, which is any analog recording, not analog <laughs> tape, but any analog recording, including a cylinder from 1906, if transferred at 96K or 4824, would wear, be able to wear the high-risk music logo. Now, how ridiculous is that? That's so super it, ridiculous. I mean, you're means, talking about these, these cylinders, which probably had a frequency response up to, what, four or five kilohertz, and that's about it. <laughs> it only matters what the delivery container is in the minds of these people that are selling the content, which is obviously very frustrating, very wrong, and going to kill the business if it hasn't already dented it you know, heavily as, as it is right now. The second qualifier is PCM. So PCM MQP, Master Quality P. So the source would come from a better than CD quality 44.1 um, PCM file. Then there's one for D, which is for DSD files, which are are using it uses a different encoding technology and the last that's the, one that's which the is technology for that's the technology SACD. used uh, for SACD right exactly and there and there are files now divorced from SACDs that go up to DSD64 is the standard SACD quality and then there's dual or 128 and there's quad 256 and there's even people talking about 512 which is getting way out of of of, of hand in terms of the sample rate. and the files become huge with no sonic benefits at all but bigger numbers for selling things the last category which is the so sort of perfect model uh we're defining remember high resolution music as better than cd quality but one of right. the source files that can go into that better than cd quality can be mqc and guess what the C stands for? Mm. CDs. What? Yes. I, I kid you not. A CD, well, when it's the only thing that's available, can actually be up and qualify as high-res music. Except when you up a CD, you you're no basically, you get no, you're getting no additional information, right? That's absolutely true. So, so that this, seems like, uh, yeah, that, that seems pretty iffy to me. Well, what it is, and I've been told, you know, point blank, what this is, is if we were to tell people the truth, it's bad for commerce. So take it from there. These are the marketing and executives who want to resell you the same thing one last time, maybe not one last time, but they would like very much for you to uh, purchase Led Zeppelin, purchase the Beatles, purchase whatever out of the catalogs that they're simply rehashing and re up resing or capturing again from analog tapes. Uh, into bigger bit buckets and selling them at premium prices. So the truth hurts that model. Uh, I don't think it does because if you tell the truth, well, you have a long-term business. But in this world, we're going to pitch to retailers, we're going to pitch to customers, we're going to pitch to the whole mass market of music fans that if you buy something with either one of these logos on it, you're going to have a dramatically enhanced listing experience, which is patently untrue.